Hello, we're going to look at Stone Age string. Stone Age people made lots of strings for lots of things and they made string from all sorts of different things too. They made strings from things they found on plants, things they found on trees and things they found in animals after they'd been hunted. And the first one we're going to start with is willow. Willow tree bark. And one of the things they could do with willow trees, which grew when it was quite cold, uh, even in the ice age they had small willow trees and they could strip the bark off the willow tree into long thin strands and twist it together to make string. Now I will show you later on how to make Stone Age string and it involves a lot of twisting of the things that you're making the string from. Now willow trees were very useful. In really cold times they could burn the wood in their fires to keep warm but they might also want to keep the wood because if you have quite thick willow branches you can make things like spears and darts and things like that. Maybe even use the thicker ones to help hold your shelter or your tent together. And you can also use the thinner ones to make baskets or things that look like baskets. So you've got a basket here which is for gathering up food but there's also this is a fish trap and this is also made from willow by weaving it together. Willow is very bendy, it's also quite tough so it's a really useful material. But they used to use the bark to make string. Now the second string that they used to make was from, believe it or not, stinging nettles. Now don't try making stinging nettle string at home uh, because one thing that stinging nettle string will always do is it will sting you. Even when you know how to make it, it stings you. But um, the stems of stinging nettles, not the leaves, they didn't use the leaves for string, but the stems of stinging nettles can be peeled apart and the tough fibres on the outside can be dried um, and kept. And then if you want to make string out of them, you just soak them in water and then you start, again, twisting the fibres to make string. Now, willow... Uh, makes quite strong, tough string, but it's not very bendy. It's good for sort of big jobs, but it's not particularly bendy. It's not very good for small jobs. And a nettle is a bit finer, and you can see that nettle string can be made for smaller jobs as well. And it's it's tough even before you make it into string. Okay, so it's good stuff, but you have to be careful when you're making it. What about string number three? Well, string number three is not made from a plant. This actually comes from an animal. <clears throat> and this is what animal skin looks like if it dries out. As you can see, it's quite rough and scratchy. It doesn't bend very well and it's certainly not very soft. It's nothing like the animal skin that I've used to make my clothes. Now the thing is, a lot of people make a mistake. They think that if you if you hunted an animal in the Stone Age and then you were cutting off its skin, you could just make a coat straight out of that skin because it would stay soft. But it doesn't. If you don't do something to the animal skin called tanning, which we'll learn about another time, um, if you don't do that, the skin ends up like that. You can't make clothes out of that. It's not a nice thing to wear against your skin and it's not going to keep you very warm, is it? But it is very useful for making string. But there's a trick and the trick is this. You don't use it like this, you have to do something to it. And if you want to see an example of animal hide that's used nowadays, this has come from something that a dog uses to keep its teeth in good shape. So if you've got a pet dog, it's possible somewhere in your house you've got a really chewed up piece of hide which your dog uses to bite on and your dog will probably not be very happy if you try to take it off it to have a look but this one is made from uh, a dog toy it's part of a dog toy and it's the sole of what used to look like a slipper 
and all the little holes in it were used for sewing the slipper together. But that's an example of how hide is used today. And again, it's dry. It's not really good for anything other than your dog chewing on it. So if I wanted to make this into some sort of string that I could wrap around something, what I've got to do is soak it in water. And I've got one here, same thing, which I've been soaking in water for a couple of days. And look, the two are very, very different. That's all floppy. That isn't. Something else. If you look at the holes on there, you can see that they're like little circles. But if I start pulling on this one, you can see that the holes begin to change, don't they? Because I'm stretching it. So this wetted hide, this wetted raw hide, is actually stretching. And that is the really good thing about it. Because if I were to wrap it round something really tight while it was wet, and then let it dry out, as it dries out, it shrinks. As it shrinks, it grips tighter and tighter and tighter. And if I show you this, this is a very smooth piece of stone that has had a piece of rawhide wrapped around it while it was wet. And the rawhide dried out in the sun. And even though the stone is smooth, the rawhide has put such a grip on it that when dried out that you can't get it off. No glue in there at all, it's just the shrinking rawhide has gripped the smooth stone so tight that you can't actually take it off anymore. Now if that was on top of a spear, if that was wrapped around a piece of wood and was holding a piece of flint, sharp flint on the top of a spear, that would be a really strong grip. So that's why rawhide was a good type of string to have. It worked differently to the other strings. What about the fourth type of string? Well, the fourth type of string comes from a tree. Here's a piece of tree. This is the bark of a lime tree. Lime trees wouldn't have grown in the ice age because it would have been a bit too cold for them. But in the warmer parts of the Stone Age, lime trees would have grown. And when they grow, they grow very tall. In fact, if you've ever been to a park uh, and seen a big long line of trees that you can walk under in the summer and it makes it shady. They could be lime trees, they're often lime trees. And uh, you might have even seen roads where you live called Lime Avenue. I don't mean limes as in the green fruits that look a bit like lemons. It's not trees where you find those, that's different. But we call these lime trees. And one thing about lime bark is, if you tear it off the tree, don't do that though, but if Stone Age people tore it off the tree, Behind the bark, they can find these long, thin fibres which they can peel off in long pieces and they can collect them all up. And because the lime trees are very tall, you can collect loads and loads of strips of lime bast. The word we use is bast, B A S T. And here's some. And you can see that I've folded this in two. So that's how long it is. If I were to stretch it out, I would just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going. And there's loads of lime bast there. Lime bast is good because you can get great long lengths of it. And that means if you want to, you can fold it over. You can, you can twist it into a piece of string and then you can twist it again into and double it up and triple it up and quadruple it up and make it into a thicker piece of string and even make it into rope. Now how, how do we know that this type of string was used around the time of the Stone Age? We know that it was used in different lengths and different types because of somebody who was found frozen up in the mountains a few years ago and when they found him, they found his body, he died over 5,000 years ago, but when they found his body it had been frozen in ice and all the things that he was wearing and carrying were all perfectly preserved. And one of the things that he had on his feet were like a pair of socks stuffed with moss and they were made from lime bast, they were made from woven lime bast. So we know that towards the end of the Stone Age and the early Copper Age they were certainly using 
lime string. And if you want to find out more about him, his name, the name we give him, is Ertzi the Iceman. What about the final piece of string? Well, the final type of string is different to the others. It comes from an animal and it's made from this stuff called sinew. Now, when the poor old animal is being chopped up after they've hunted it and they're chopping it up and cutting it up for the meat and the bones, possibly the antlers if it's a deer, or the horns and the animal skin, one of the things that they're going to keep, keep is the sinew. Now it doesn't look like this inside the animal. Inside the animal sinew looks like long, rubbery, stretchy strands. And sinew in an animal is similar to what we have in our bodies that make our fingers move and our wrists move and our elbows move and our knees as well. And it's called, we call them tendons. And tendons help our, help our bodies move and stretch and then go back into shape again. So if we didn't have tendons in our fingers, our fingers would just go floppy like that. So animals have sinews for the same reason and sinews can be taken out of the animal, dried and then bashed with a stone until they go out flat again and then little strips of dried sinew can be torn off to get lots of little pieces like that. Now the trouble is sinew because it's thin and it's very strong is really good for sewing really good for sewing things like clothes but you can't sew with little tiny pieces like that so what you have to do is join it together. Now I know that most children like to hear about yucky things and there's lots of yucky things in the Stone Age. The way they put sinew together was to put it in their mouth, which I'm not going to do, and make it all gooey inside their mouth by moving it around inside their mouth, make it all sticky, and then they would take the two ends and start twisting them together. And all the sticky saliva from their mouths would help glue the two pieces of sinew together and they'd have to keep doing that for every extra bit they had to do the same thing put it in their mouth and glue it and eventually just like this here's a piece that's been joined together in that way and you can see I've got a needle on the end and the needle would be made from the antler or the bone of the animal and I will show you a little bit more about that another time. But there we have it, lots of strings for lots of things.